A big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. Hey, my name is Morrison, and I want to find out if I can put bark on the chicken. And if you want to find out how I did it, then check out the website, pitmasex.com. We got all the recipes right there. I'm not gonna kiss it. No? I'm not gonna kiss it, no. So, I had this idea of creating a bark like I do on brisket, because <laughs> that's basically everything I do. That's, that's all I do, create brisket. But creating a brisket bark on a chicken. Because I have to admit, I like chicken more than I do brisket. I like chicken more than brisket. Eva, I like chicken more than brisket. So, I got a beautiful free range chicken here. And I did some research, there are a couple of options. So, one of them, and probably the most important part here is mustard. Because every time I want a, a bark on something that is beef, I'm using mustard. And when I do it brisket, I like to do it in an American fashion, so I get Hellman's. And for those who say that Hellman's is the best mayonnaise in the world, it's, it, it's really not, man. Dutch mayonnaise is the best. But, okay, this is the American mustard. We're talking about mustard now. So this is the American mustard and I would use Hellman's for a brisket. But I'm doing chicken now and I'm doing it in my own way. I, I want this bark. So I got French mustard. This is the cheapest one actually, but I like it the most. And one of the reasons that I like it the most is it's really easy. So let's get started. First of all, my chicken likes bondage, but I don't. So I'm gonna take the bondage off. And now it's time for the mustard. There's only one rule here, get it everywhere. Look how yellow that is, that's beautiful. If you don't like mustard, you can probably do it with mayonnaise as well. I like mustard because it adds some flavor, but it doesn't add the flavor that you're used to with mustard. Because when you heat mustard up, the strong taste goes away. That's why I prefer this over mayonnaise as an adhesive. I wanna get in mustard on the inside as well, because I just want more flavor. That's basically it, more flavor. Now it's time for the rub. For the rub, I'm going to use one part fleur de sel sea salt, one part paprika powder, a half part of turmeric, a quarter part of garlic powder, and a quarter part of white pepper. Put the cap on, shake it up. Now the trick is to get the rub everywhere without touching the skin, because when you touch it, you completely pull off all that mustard and rub in one go. Also, I want to make sure that the layer is really, really thick because we're going for the, for the thickest bark we can get. Get it carefully on its side and get it everywhere. Also, I want to make sure that I get the rub inside because we want a lot of flavor on the inside. Now it's time for the rotisserie. So I've got my rotisserie right here. I'm gonna place this one right here. And now it should be really easy. There you go. Get the other one on. So now I see that I need a little bit more room on this side. So I'm gonna slide it down like that. Check it, you see? That's perfect. Tighten it up on both sides. Final check. This looks, this, this looks amazing, man. So I fired up my Napoleon, because it's a gas grill, I have a lot of control. So I figured if I want to have a crust, I need to take this slow. So I want to have hot air flowing around. I put on all the burners, but I put them to the lowest position. So we have a lot of hot air and it's currently around 95 degrees Celsius inside. So it's going to take a longer time and I want to take it slow because I need full control and I have different options for getting a better bark. I'll show you. I want to keep on adding bark. So I'm going to replicate what I already did with the rub. I'm going to put mustard in a bowl and add the rest of the barbecue rub that we already made to it. Mix it up and add some apple cider vinegar to it. Not too much, I just want that smooth consistency. Otherwise, we won't be able to baste it on. All 
right, so now we are building up a, a kind of a crust right here. This is what I want. I want it to dry up, get thicker. But as you can see, we have a lot of pieces that don't have that rub and mustard. I'm gonna put a tray right here. So we have our up apple cider vinegar in. It's a little bit thinner now. And now I'm going to try to brush it. Get that mustard on and then it won't drip away. It gets harder and harder to create what we want. And that's a bark. I don't want to touch what is already a crust. Just want to see if I can get all those bold spots. Now we just have to look if it dries up. I'm going to close the lid and watch what happens. A few moments later. The thing is, it's not really getting into a crust. So I'm going to put on some more on all the other sides as well. What I, I figured out in the minutes that has gone by is that I can put my rub on it. So as you can see, the crust is developing now. And we're almost to that point that I'm saying, mm, this is kind of good and I'm gonna take it off. But I got some more tricks. Watch this. We're gonna make an oil. I'm starting with rapeseed oil. I'm gonna add some chili flakes. Be careful because you wanna have your oil hot. I'm going for 160 degrees Celsius. I've transferred it to a cast iron pan because this is better for pouring. I got my back burner on right now. And now I'm going to pour it all over that crust. Look at it. This is the last trick. This is all I have right now. Our chicken reached a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius and it's done. As you can see, my final trick was somehow a good idea and somehow a really bad idea because it washed away a lot of that crust. So I've learned something, don't use oil. It was, it was a beautiful idea and it, it did the job. It somehow fried it right on the spot, but it was just, it was too much. It was getting soggy and it leaked away and it, it, it just took away all that crust. Because come, take a look how much crust is in there. That's horrible. I want to eat it though. That's really a shame. But I must say it does look good. Like this part is really hard. Put a little bit more of the mustard on. A little bit more of the basing sauce on at the end. Just, I was just trying to, to save it practically. Of course, this is not the only thing we're gonna do with it. I'm gonna make something beautiful out of this. So I'm slicing up my chicken. So I baked a beautiful ciabatta, and I'm gonna cover it with arugula, because come on, you gotta be healthy. Then I baked some bell peppers in a pan. I'm gonna carefully add that to our sandwich. Then I'm making a sauce, starting with a cup of mayonnaise, adding some chili flakes, a drip of barbecue sauce for that smoky flavor. Now I've, I've put it all in this bag, which I'm slicing the tip off. Then I'm gonna add my chicken, get some skin in there as well, and put the rest of the mayonnaise on the top side. Put the cap on and slice it in half. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? This was amazing. I wanna do this way more, way more. This is an experiment and I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand this experiment. But first, Let's just cut to the chase. So uh, basically you make sure you perfected this. I'm gonna take a bite in it now because it looks amazing, like the colors. So here we go. Oh my God. That is insane. Oh, this just puts directly a smile on my face, man. Mm -hmm -hmm. I think that what I discovered isn't necessarily about the bark. What I discovered is that a mustard chicken is freaking amazing. You should call you Herb Master Morrison. Yeah, I think right. that's the new title. To all the viewers, Herb Master Morrison. That was really good. B back to business, there are a couple of things that could have been better. That whole frying oil thing, keep on basing it with the rub and the mustard. That's freaking amazing, man. You gotta try this. All right, here we go. You made something else. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, I already took a bite. Oh, let's just go. Let's just go. Let, let's, just, let's just go. Hmm. Oh, man. There's some crazy good ideas. Like, the thing that I discovered here isn't about the bark. The bark was a cool thing, but it's like the flavor combination that does it. Mm -hmm. 
I, knew I wasn't really going for this, but also like the 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 bell peppers and the chicken together is yeah. really weird, man. But it does something to your head. It's amazing. And the pitmaster isn't here right now, but I'm calling out the pitmaster if you can do better than this. That's a good one. Or we no. challenge our own pitmaster. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I want to thank all the patrons and the YouTube members, but also everybody for just sticking around, watching our videos, commenting. If you have an opinion about this recipe, comment down below. I hope to see you guys next time in the next video. Next video is gonna be Pitmaster again. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. Eet, eet smakelijk. Until then. Until then. Keep on grilling. And eet smakelijk. That was... <laughs> that was horrible. That was horrible. Are we going crazier next time? I don't know, man. I can't top this off. That's why I want to see the Pitmaster do this thing with this. Mm -hmm.